So we are in part 11 of the series Power Stories from the Early Church. And if you'd like to catch up on the series, what you can do is you can go back onto my Facebook page and every week there is a series, um, a, a part of that series. And so our story today comes from Acts chapter 10. So if you'd like to um, pull out your Bibles, um, whether they are digital or whether they are paper copies of the Bible, um, please pull out your Bible because I'm going to be reading fast through this chapter. I'd like to go through the whole chapter of Acts chapter 8. And I would like to share this story with you today. It is super, super powerful. Um, chapter 10. I beg your pardon. Did I say 8? All right. Acts chapter 10. And here we see a story of the divine human partnership in the advancement of the gospel. So let's, uh, let's go together. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. It says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man. And one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel of the Lord spoke to him, had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from amongst those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. So here is a devout Gentile. He's not part of the chosen nation. He is an outsider. All right. And as the traditions of the Jews were, they could not mix with outsiders. And we'll see how the Holy Spirit shatters that tradition into smithereens. But the point I'd like to make on this section is it's so beautiful to see that this devout Gentile is approached by the angel of the Lord in a vision. And today's message is entitled, Two Visions and Two Baptisms. What was, what was one of the things that the angel said to Cornelius? What did, the, what did God notice about Cornelius? God noticed that Cornelius was a compassionate and generous man giving alms. And the King, King James Version uses the word alms, but it, alms means giving necessary things. Whether it's money or food or clothing, he was giving to the poor. And he also noticed that Cornelius was spending time in prayer consistently. As a matter of fact, he's, uh, the angel said to him, um, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. So here Cornelius is being invited to greater Heights of spirituality. But notice what is the precursor of greater heights of spirituality. What is that? It's personal devotion. So the, the whole plot of this story is being set up so that this, this devout Gentile can be invited to higher levels of spirituality. So he's being invited to meet Peter, 
All right? And, and the angel is telling him to send people out. In verse 5, he says, Now send men to Joppa and, and send for Simon, whose name is Peter. So this devout Gentile is going to be introduced to one of Christ's disciples. So that one of Christ's disciples who had a personal um, testimony of seeing the Messiah face to face is now going to connect with this, this Gentile whom the Jews don't mix with. You remember the story of the Samaritan woman. How the disciples were so surprised that Jesus was actually speaking to her because it was the Jewish tradition that they would be separate from the surrounding nations. That they would purify themselves, that they would not defile themselves with these um, pagan peoples. <laughs> but you know what we do when we separate ourselves from people around us? We are saying that God is not able to move in their lives and and bring them across our paths where we too can guide them to higher levels of spirituality. When we separate ourselves from people and say that they're not worthy, what we are actually saying is that God's Spirit is impotent. And God's Spirit cannot move people outside of our circles and outside of our church to a knowledge of Him. Be very, very careful. Because here is a, 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 a former pagan, a Gentile, who is a devout man. How was how he a de devout man? Who, who led him to that? It wasn't the Jews. It was the Spirit of God. Beautiful, beautiful story, my friend. So many lessons for us today. Let's move on. Are you excited? Do you want to see what's going to happen? You all know the story. But wow, look at this now. It says the next day, they went on their journey and drew near the city. Now Peter went up to the housetop to do what? To pray. About the sixth hour, when he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and he saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and led down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things and birds of the air. And the voice came to him and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, 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 Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And he probably would have said, as the book of Leviticus states to us. And the voice spoke to him again the second time and says, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times. And again, the object was taken up to heaven again. <laughs> Two visions. The one vision given to a Gentile. Why? Because of personal devotion. Another given uh, vision given to the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ by the name of Peter. What was the precursor to that vision? Personal devotion. He was up on the rooftop praying. His heart was ready. He was seeking God. You see, my friends, personal devotion is the precursor to higher levels of spirituality. And personal devotion is the precursor to more intense ministry opportunities. Because now Peter, was, who was a Jew, whose culture was you're not allowed to mix with Gentiles. But if Peter didn't have personal devotion, Peter would not have been led to this Head on collision with the tradition of the Jews, which is to go into a Gentile's house and to minister to them. <laughs> Personal devotion is the precursor to greater levels of spirituality and 
more complicated and complex ministry opportunities. Absolutely beautiful. And so this vision is given to Peter. This sheet comes down from heaven. And he sees all these unclean creatures. A great symbolism of how the Jews saw the people around them. The Jews saw the, the nations around them as unclean. Right? So God is using the symbolism of an, a sheet of unclean animals coming down. And a lot of people around us, a lot of Christians will say, You see, this is a vision to say that we can eat unclean foods. Doesn't matter. Whatever we eat, when it goes into you, uh, it doesn't defile you. They use this vision. But is this what the vision was trying to teach? No. That's a, a misapplication of this vision. As we read through, we'll see exactly what this vision was. This vision was s obliterating this Jewish tradition of not mixing with the nations around them. Let's read on. You ready? I'm going to read fast. All right. Acts chapter 10 verse 17. All right, this is a power story that is going to teach us a lot of lessons. While Peter, wondering within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and they asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision the Spirit said to him, my friends, how often don't we need the Spirit to specifically say something to us? That is possible. This is happening in the book of Acts. It can happen with you. It can happen to, to me. A lot of people are teaching that the Holy Spirit is, no, is not part of the Trinity. But here the Holy Spirit says to Peter, specifically in his ears, he hears it clearly. Behold, these men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had, who had sent him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he who you seek. For what reason do you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man who fears God and has a good reputation amongst all the nation of the Jews was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. So they came into Peter's house and they spent the night. The next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So how beautiful. The Holy Spirit specifically says to Peter, these men I have sent. Go with them. Cornelius specifically heard the name of Peter in his ears. And so this connection was made from both sides. God with Peter, God with Cornelius making this connection. I've been in ministry for 20 years. And I have made a lot of silly mistakes. You know why? Because I didn't hear specifics from God. My friends, when there's confusion in the church, when there's confusion in the family, when there's confusion, it's the absence of the Holy Spirit because God is not a God of confusion. If there's confusion in the higher rankings of the church, if there's confusion about women's ordination, and there's not harmony and unity, obviously the Holy Spirit is not speaking to everyone something specific. When there's confusion about matters in our church, we need to go back and do what? Personal devotion! It's personal devotion that brings the specifics from the Holy Spirit to each one of us. When there's confusion, go back to the upper room. 
That's where Acts started. Jesus said to the disciples, do not move from here until the Holy Spirit has fallen down on you. Until you receive the gift of my Father. Don't move. So if we are stuck with 700,000 uh, votes on the one side and 600,000 votes on the other side, we are stuck as a church. We cannot vote that. We've got to wait. And we've got to send out a, a worldwide petition to, to everyone to pray. Pray over your culture. Pray beyond your culture. Pray beyond your personal preferences. Pray beyond all human involvement on the issue. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We cannot make a decision when there's a vote. Because when there's confusion, the Holy Spirit is absence. And the following day, let's move on. Beautiful, beautiful story. The following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them. Of course he's waiting. He's excited. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. And Peter was coming in. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. <laughs> but Peter says, hey... And he lifted him up saying, stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or to go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked then, for what reason have you sent me? And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And said, Cornelius, your prayer has... And said, sorry, this is the man saying to him... Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your, your arms are remembered in the sight of God. Therefore, to Joppa, send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. And he is lodging in the house of Simon a tanner by the sea. And when he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately and you have done well to come. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all things commanded to you by God. My friends, Peter quotes to them the Jewish tradition. Peter quotes to them and says, it is our tradition that we cannot mix with other nations. Now, what a paradox is this? Why did God call Israel as the chosen nation? Why did God give them the Pentateuch? The writings of Moses in advance of, of the rest of the prophets and all that. Why did he give them the, the Old Testament? Was it to be separate? <laughs> he gave them all these writings so that they can be an example to other nations. He gave them all these writings so that they could be, they could lift these nations and be an example to them and, and be a shining light to where they would Mix with them and show them the character of Christ. Not to be separate from them. When the Bible says be he separate, it's talking about being separate of the practices and the teachings and the corruption of the nations. But if you are spirit filled and anointed by God, you can walk amongst people who aren't believers and you can have your influence over theirs. So here a Jewish tradition has a head-on collision with the Spirit's leading. And it is shattered completely. And so Peter understands, Peter, the Holy Spirit reveals to Peter that, that that sheet full of the unclean animals is not a green light 
to go down and, and, and hunt for all the unclean animals in the, around him on land and on sea. It was to show him that the Jewish tradition of calling nations unclean had come to an end. That it was an incorrect tradition. And so my friends, Peter is given the opportunity now to share the Lord Jesus Christ with this group of, of believers. And I think there were even some people there who were unbelievers. So in verse 34, Peter opened his mouth and, he, and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Isn't that beautiful? God shows no partiality. And in this context, it was God shows no partiality between Jews and Gentiles. But my friends, I believe this is a statement, an absolute statement. If God doesn't show partiality between Jews and Gentiles, He doesn't show partiality between Arabs and Jews. He doesn't show partiality between males and females. He doesn't show partiality between the older generation and the younger generation. He doesn't show partiality between the rich and the poor. He doesn't show partiality between the educated and the uneducated. He shows no partiality. And he calls people from all walks of life, both sides of all males and females, Jews and Gentiles, God is moving. And when you hear a teaching from your forefathers in the Adventist church to say that we should not mix with people around us, this is a similar teaching to what the Jews had. It is not of God. Because God shows no partiality. What it is saying, my friends, is that God is not working in the prisons. What it's saying is that God's not working in the crack houses. That God's not working amongst the alcoholics and the prostitutes. It's, it, what it's saying is that, that God's spirit is not able to move a Gentile like Cornelius to be a devout God-fearing man. <laughs> God is all powerful, all wise and ever present. He is in the crack houses. He's in the prisons. He's amongst the prostitutes. He's amongst the drug addicts. He changes lives. And it's up to us as a praying church to pray God's power into every nook and cranny. Where the, where the hosts of hell are trying to get a foothold, we need to pray them out of there because God is powerful and He will do that. So here Peter now comes and he, he shows them and he just says to them, but in every nation, but in every nation, whoever fears Him and works righteousness is accepted by Him. The word which God sent His children of Israel Preaching peace throughout Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know. Which was proclaimed throughout Judea. And began from Galilee. After the baptism which John preached. How Jesus anointed. How God sorry anointed. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. With power. Who went about doing good and healing all. Who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And they killed him by hanging on the tree. Here he's going through the whole beautiful gospel. Him God raised up on the third day and shown him openly. Not to all the people, but to the witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is who was ordained by God to judge, to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets, witnesses that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Woo! So now Peter is now giving the higher levels of spirituality to these devout people who had personal devotion, who were spending time fasting and prayer, asking for more. 
What does the Bible say? If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. And now come the two baptisms. Whew. Two visions. Two visions. And here come two baptisms. My friends, and this is a, a teaching that we in the Seventh-day Adventist Church don't teach as often as we should. The two baptisms of the Holy Spirit. Now, God, may this happen at crossroads today as we are preaching the word of God. May this happen today. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And they commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. Acts chapter 10. Woohoo! We went right through it. <laughs> All right, guys. So, how exciting is this? So, Peter is speaking, and the people are listening. And as he speaks, the Holy Spirit falls down in power on them. And it's unden undeniable. They can feel the presence. My friends, when you're in the presence of God, you can feel it. Yes. It's not an intellectual thing. It's not a thing that you, that you read through a textbook and then you decide that you're in the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, you feel His presence. How many of you want to be in the presence of God today? How many of you admit that you're a sinner and that you need God desperately? Well, if you believe that, God's presence can be amongst us and can fall down on us even now. When the human will has been moved out of the way and surrendered to God, the Spirit of God has an opportunity to fall down and to work. Yes. And so these Gentiles, these Gentiles who'd been cut off by the proud, haughty Jews who thought that they had received the truth and they were strutted around like they, had, they were ready for translation. These Gentiles received the, the full baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then Peter realized the full extent of that vision with the sheets. And he realized that they too can be baptized by water. Now the book of Acts will, will talk to you about those who were baptized first by water and didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 8, we've spoken about that already. They were baptized with the water first in Acts chapter 8. And the disciples came down and said, have you heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And they said, no, we haven't. And so then they laid hands on them and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, these Gentiles are baptized with the Holy Spirit first. And then they were baptized with the baptism of John to repentance. Have you received both baptisms? Or have you only received one? My friends, as you and I commit ourselves to personal devotion, as our first call with God, you and I need to come before God humbly with a contrite heart and allow the Holy Spirit to show us just how sinful and how weak we are. Allow the Holy Spirit to show us how much we need Him. When we do that, our, nothing else in our lives will matter. Not our jobs, not our marriages, not our families. Our first call will be personal devotion. Because we will know that as a husband, as a father, as a, a leader, as a, a worker in any business, unless we have the Holy Spirit with us, we will 
fail on multiple levels. So personal devotion is the stepping stone to higher levels of spirituality as it was with Cornelius. And personal devotion was an opportunity for more complex, challenging phases of ministry as with Peter. And it takes the baptism, it takes two baptisms to receive the full measure of what God has given us. My friends, and I believe those two baptisms should happen in our personal devotion day by day. <laughs> the baptism of water, where we, where we realize how sinful we are and we come before God and we say, God, baptize me in you. Forgive my sin as I forgive those who sin against me. It's a baptism of water. And then once we've been cleansed of sin, we then realize that we cannot in our human strength do anything by ourselves. We then ask for the full baptism of the Holy Spirit to fall upon us. Have you received the two baptisms? Do you receive the two baptisms day by day, moment by moment? Unless you do, you're not experiencing the full measure of what God wants to give to you. When Jesus was baptized, he bowed his head and he prayed. And what happened? The Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And the voice from heaven came saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> Are we receiving two baptisms? Every morning before we go into our day. I invite you to do that today. I invite you to experience the full measure of the divine human partnership. I invite you to experience the full power of God that will take you to higher levels of spirituality and more complicated op opportunities and more complex opportunities for ministry. How many of you would like to receive this message today? Isn't it beautiful? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, what a great reminder of how your power is unleashed on sinful human beings who see their great need, who know their inadequacy and who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Father, thank you for this story, which is a a divine appointment to bring two parties together for higher levels of spirituality and more complex ministry opportunities. Father, you've seen the hands, you've seen those who desire to follow in the footsteps of these two men for a daily baptism of water, of repentance, and a daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. To be anointed as Jesus Christ was and to hear those words, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. So Father, we thank you for hearing us today. We thank you for being amongst us. We thank you for moving our hearts to receive the power from on high. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for going through the story with me and God bless each one of you.